I'm gonna talk about game music. Not gay music, game music. So, my name is Matthias, Matthias Hegström Yet, for people who cares about last names. And I make music for games. And these are some of the games I've made music for. You might know Cathode Race by Christopher or Cobalt by those guys who got nominated for the IGF Excellence in Audio Award. And <laughs> Scrolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was mostly part of Daniel's sound effect. And Scrolls, uh, Mojang's next game. I'm scoring together with Josh Welch, who people might know. And Street Fighter is pretty cool to me, at least. Anyway, I'm going to talk about my creative process, or more exactly, what I actually <laughs> process creatively. Because a creative process, you need something to process. And I boiled it down to six things. <coughs> Concept art, story, gameplay, discussions, reference tracks, or something else entirely. Which is kind of a cheating point, but <laughs> it works for me. So, an example of concept art. This is from Cobalt, early stages of Cobalt when it was a single player game. And, uh, you know, I got this picture, we talked a bit too, but it was mainly this image of the city. You see, it's a really dark city, it has a strip club for shrubs, and it has some sci fi stuff. So I thought, yeah, I need to do something like dark and edgy, but also some Blade Runner kind of influences. So, what I did is what you can hear here, I think. <laughs> Fusing jazz with the Blade Runner synth influences. This was really primarily based on the images of the that's why I put this under concept art. And again, it doesn't have to be concept art, it can be finished art too. But any artwork is a great source of inspiration for composers and something you should aim to give them. Next we have story. You don't actually have to read this, you can. <laughs> I summarize it for you. Uh, I made music for a, a fighting game that is nowhere near done called Fantasy Strike by the guy who balanced uh, Street Fighter II, the HD remix. I like him, David Serling. So basically I based the music on his character descriptions, which are extremely intricate because he's made other games in the same universe. So this, this guy, Geiger or Geiger, is uh, a watchmaker and a scientist experimenting with time. So basically, the main element has to be kind of mechanical, like he's you know working with watches, and also have a, a timing kind of uh, influence. So I have a, a, a clock actually ticking, basically off track. And you can hear and read <coughs> while you hear it what I kind of took and made music here. from Scrolls. This is not really a quote by Jacob, the main designer of Scrolls, but it was basically <laughs> what he said. I don't have the exact quote, so I kind of made it up. And he said, we need some music for the deck building mode, where you kind of build your deck for the card game. It needs to be looping, it needs to be kind of long, it needs to be one neutral track with variations based on various things, and it has to be non-intrusive, as you spend a really long time building your deck. So what I did was this. It's really low-key. being that if you spend one hour building your deck, you don't want music punching you in the face all the time. And this is kind of... I have a short, short question there. Couldn't you make that, that part of the game shorter by making really stressful music? You <laughs> <laughs> could! But, but as an old Magic the Gathering player, I would hate that. <laughs> Basically, this is what I'm doing on Scrolls, and Josh Watch is doing the really dramatic stuff because he's great at that. This is more and uh, finally some more Then we have discussions, and this is important for all you game devs who are 
you know, not composers, talking to the composers, programmer and composer, or game designer and composer, talking together, can yield some really great results. This is a discussion I had with Fernando Ramalo, who did the uh, cardboard box assembly <laughs> that's on Adult Swim. And basically, he came up to me, and I was thinking the intro would be like a parody of all anime intros ever, with, you know, way over the top stuff and synth shots with the music. And then I came in, oh, yeah, like cowboy bebop, yes, like jazz and saxophones and, and hot stuff. So based on this discussion, without any concept art or gameplay or anything talked about, I did this. <laughs> sensitive for composers because you can approach it in different ways. This is sadly one of the more common ones when people, game developers, they already have a reference track but they can't actually use it because of copyright. <laughs> so it, they kind of make me copy, you know, make a carbon copy that I can't be sued over but that's so close it's, it's basically the same song which is not very fun to get an instruction. These two are the better options. So. I can use this track uh, as an inspiration. It's close to what I want, but you can probably do it better. Then you're also lying and being nice. <laughs> and finally, please listen to this. It has something I like, which is the best part. It's just extra inspiration, extra food for thought. And in this example for uh, Catapult for Hire, a game by Tyrone Henry, I think Indie Pub or something similar will publish it. Uh, he gave me a reference track. And I took some parts of it, but uh, as you would hear, I made it <laughs> very different. So, this is what he sent me, very low volume. Basically a very medieval kind of sound, which is cool. But based on the actual game and this track, I kind of took it in a different direction, more upbeat and less you know, just medieval, straight up, and I even added some chip tune stuff because I heard in this like it, and it sounds like this. You'll hear the medieval stuff too. powerful in that it gives you some ideas. Basically I took the hurdy-gurdy style and, and took it in a different direction. And this is dangerous. <laughs> Something else entirely. My example is uh, when I worked with Morsel Games who did Kaleidoscope uh, with a game called Super Game and I had a song lying around that was awesome that sounded like helicopters and I wanted to put it in the game. So we kind of based the game around that instead. And while the track is good it did not make much sense but it sounded like this. As you can see, the game got cancelled, so it, yeah, wasn't a good decision. Yeah, and some guitar noodling. So, what do I actually want to say with this? Good questions. Everything is good inspiration. Everything that a composer can get his hands on related to the game is really good, which leads me to this point. Supply tons of material. Since most of you are not composers, but game developers, I urge you to send as much material as you have to the composer. It can be stories, just a script. Even if you have nothing else, it can be early concept art. It doesn't have to be super polished. Even if you just have a thought about a character, it's better to mention it to the composer than not, because you need to talk to them. <laughs> and it's not really just talking, but you need to talk to them and have discussions. But the most important thing is to let them do what they do best. So you can talk to them, you can give inspiration, but you shouldn't say do this exactly, because that never yields a good result. You should instead encourage the composer to use your project 
also as a means of creative growth. So they can actually, let's say they're super interested in something special, a chip tune, then maybe they could do that too. Because they're so interested, the result is most likely going to be much better. And that's what I had to say. Thank you. Whoa. Whoa.